So I, I'm, I'm noticing this picture here. Do you see them? Do you see it? Yes. The posters, the posters and me. I was I was 23 at that time and now I'm 63 so it's 40 years <laughs> uh, 40 years I've been working and being in love with gestalt therapy and uh, the every, every every conference that is organized by big associations like EAGT I think it's a piece of history of our approach so it's a very important uh, event uh, because we gather all together and we, we see new things um, and we are very excited to meet each other. So the, the most important thing is to meet each other and know what the other colleague is doing. So I can tell you my, my process in these last years uh, has been very much connected with the relational approach of gestalt therapy. So concepts like the contact boundary, the field, uh, the presence of the therapist in the field, these have been uh, my main topics. And I have uh, uh, studied the concept of aesthetic relational knowledge, which is uh, the way the therapist knows the client via his feelings, his uh, bodily feelings, the aesthetic knowledge of the client. And this brings also to the concept that I will present, which is the reciprocity, how therapists and clients dance together uh, with uh, the purpose of supporting uh, the client's intentionality for contact. So it's a beautiful dance where we are, the, we are active as therapists when we see the beauty of the client in his suffering in every suffering there is the beauty of um, the way the client has been able to keep alive to keep in contact and keep alive in spite of difficult situations so i think that in gestalt therapy we have this special uh, glance to the suffering which is to see the the beauty that the client doesn't see, is not aware of uh, in the suffering, in his suffering. And the posters have been important in this uh, uh, thought to me. So I'm, I'm also director of a, an institute which is on since 1979. And I, I, many students and now trainers of my institute will participate. So I, I support all the students, first of all, of Gestalt Therapy Institutes to participate in this conference in Budapest because they will change their perspective on Gestalt Therapy when they will participate in the conference. It's a beautiful thing to see all the um, different colors of our approach from many countries and this will be an international conference so it will be very interesting and I also support all the trainers to present what they uh, have, de have been developing in their method of teaching and also in their therapeutic practice um, it's um, it's very good to learn from presenting their own development. Because when we present something, we also learn uh, from our own presentation. It's, we don't present just to, be, uh, to show ourselves, but we present for the experience of presenting, which is, uh, which is uh, nourishing in itself. So um, I like the subject of this um, of this uh, conference, the fertile void. Um, fertile void is a condition, as we know from Solomon Friedlander, uh, a condition from where creativity can can grow, can can come out, 
And, uh, and I think also from the fertile void that we can make between two people, between therapists and clients, uh, new figures can come out, new dancers can come out. Uh, when the therapist uh, has the intentionality to support the, the resource of the client, um, and the client has the intentionality to uh, be better and to, um, uh, to entrust himself to the, to the therapist, then uh, they both make uh, a new dance. So um, this is what I wanted to say. And uh, I would like also to ask how the things go in, uh, in your organization of the conference. Yeah, we are in a huge work. As you experienced earlier several times, well, how much work there, there is, right, with the organization. And we had some IT background problems for a couple of weeks, but finally it's over. And now we have three more weeks to encourage people to hold workshops. And we also would like to sell more tickets because we are already very good with selling, but we, uh, our, we have a plan to invite 720 people to the conference. The venue is beautiful. I don't know if you ever been in Budapest. I don't know that exactly. No, this is the first time. Yeah. yeah. So you, you will experience and hopefully you will like the city and the people around here. And uh, so we are ex excited. This is the first time we do so. And uh, sorry, my dog is here and he always wants to be the part <laughs> of the field. <laughs> and sometimes to be the figure. <laughs> and um, I'm very much interested in, and I don't know if you would like to speak about it, about like how you begin began your professional life. Because we know a lot about you, what you did in the last, 30, 40 years. It's wonderful and there are a lot of results and really, mm -hmm. really wonderful to know about so many results you got. But can you tell something for for the new beginners how how you were in those days in the, in the 70s and then the first oh. cash start, what was your first in, impact with the cash start, how would it happen and things like that if you have a couple of things mm -hmm. for this, then I would Oh yes, sure. Yes, I, 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 I was studying psychology in Rome uh, in the in seventy four, uh, from seventy four to seventy eight, and at that time in Rome there was all 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 that we might want about psychotherapy. All the new methods were there with their with their beginners, you know, with their with their. Um, founders like uh, Rogers and uh, um, Sluski and uh, um, many other uh, founders of uh, uh, psychotherapy approach, the new psychotherapy approach were there. So they were beautiful ears in that time. And so I tried when I was studying psychology and I tried many approaches. I tried psychoanalysis, I tried family therapy, I tried uh, cognitive therapy with uh, Liotti and Guidano, I, I tried uh, transactional analysis and client-centered therapy. But when I met Crystal Therapy, it was uh, love at first sight because I'm, 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 a, I'm a creative person. I could not stand much uh, you know, rigid approaches with roots. So when I met Gestalt Therapy, it was that. That what that was what I wanted to be. Uh, I think also because Gestalt Therapy focuses the process, not only for the creativity, but also for the process. I'm I'm um, I'm more a mathematician than a verbal person. So my parents and my family, they are all mathematicians. So when I saw an approach that could stay with the music of the person, with the how, with the body's move, body movements, then I liked that very much. And until now, I think that the gestalt therapy is very deep, can be very deep because 
it, it, it stays with the process, which is a depth that we can see on the surface. And so I started to study Gestalt therapy with a, a German professor that was uh, one of my professors at the university. But very soon when I got the degree, I was 23, I went to the pollsters and, uh, in California. And uh, I took the two years program with them. And there I met Isidore Fromm, one of the founders, you know, Isidore Fromm, one of the founders in New York. So the pollsters gave me the, the glance, the positive glance to the suffering of the people. And Isidore Fromm gave me, uh, the, made me uh, know the, the book, the Perse Eferlein Goodman book, and uh, the New York Institute for Gestalt Therapy. So I started to invite these three people, the pollsters and Isidore Fromm, to Italy and, and to Sicily, because I live in Sicily. I, had the, I, I, I attended the university in Rome, but then I came back in Sicily, uh, to Sicily. And uh, I invited uh, these big pieces in Sicily, a, a land where nobody knew what psychotherapy is, not gestalt therapy, but even psychotherapy. So it was very pioneer, pioneering world. Um, and and uh, they came, they came to Sicily and we had conferences and we founded the, the institute in 1979, the Istituto di Gestalt, HCC, which is for Human Communication Center, Italy. Uh, so they, they were the first uh, trainers, the posters and Isidore Fromm. Uh, then I met other, other trainers whom I invited like, uh, the Navises, Sonia Navis and Ed Navis, Joseph Zinker, Carl Hodges, then Dan Bloom and uh, Richard Kitzler, uh, Vua Lafranc, uh, they, uh, Gordon Wheeler, they all came to teach in, the, in my institute. Uh, then we, we spread, from Sicily we spread to north of Italy. And so we had five, five offices in, in Italy. Um, we had the first conferences of Gestalt therapy in Italy. We were the first school in uh, Gestalt therapy in Italy. Then there was the law in Italy and um, that say that only psychologists and medical doctors could enter training programs in psychotherapy. And so uh, we were accredited by the Minister for the Universities for that. And now I have three offices, one in Milan, one in Palermo, and one in Syracuse. So two in Sicily and one in, uh, and one in Milan. Uh, different cultures, very interesting, the mixture of these cultures. And, uh, and uh, I also, now I train also international programs. Not only Italian programs, but also international progr pro programs for um, psychotherapists from all over the world. Uh, this is something that I enjoy very much and I'm very happy that uh, I can stay with these people, I can work with these people, like for in seminars, intensive seminars for five days to offer psychotherapists the space for, the, for themselves to work with them in a beautiful place, which is ancient Greek theater, like in Syracuse and beautiful sea where they can swim. I enjoy very much to invite psychotherapists from all over the world in my home, my house, and, uh, and do something for them, be, be, help, be helpful for them. And, and also I train, I have a training program in psychopathology and uh, developmental processes. Uh, and this is also attended, this is two years, and then other two years. Uh, this is also attended from uh, psychotherapists from all over the world. And then I have a program for supervisors, uh, gestalt, gestalt supervisors, uh, following the rules of the EAGT. Yes. You are too wonderful. And so I am on your waiting list. I don't know in which year I will have a place. <laughs> <laughs> Two or three years later, or I don't know. And yes. Margarita, you mentioned that you are a creative person, and I'm really curious if you just say something about how could you find your 
place in Gestalt and with your creative uh, yourself. How was uh, creativity in Gestalt? It's a very something interesting. Yeah, it's very, you know, that uh, creativity is uh, one of the basic aspects of Gestalt therapy. Laura Pearls used to say that there are as many Gestalt therapists, as many Gestalt therapies, as many Gestalt therapists. And of course, she meant that we need to develop our own style, our own way of being psychotherapist. And, and so I found this very a beautiful aspect of Gestalt therapy. I think I couldn't have done any other. I couldn't have been any anything else than a Gestalt psychotherapist because I can. I'm free to do. I feel free to do whatever I I want. Uh, and whatever I consider helpful for the client, of course. Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, I don't use uh, creative means like um, painting or, you know, uh, photos or, uh, but I like people who do that. I just, I prefer to be in touch with the people with uh, the creativity of being together with the movements and, the, but, um, Yes, I think I I found I find Gestalt therapy a very good approach for uh, people who feel themselves as creative people.